Brought to you by Almon Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. Georgia is the peach state, and no doubt this is one peach of a Ford tractor. Danny Norman is a world-class Ford collector, and one of the jewels of his collection is this rare Ford 8N. Well, it's a 51 Ford 8N, and it has, of course, a single front wheel. Um, my interest is always to try to have one of these tractors because everybody is familiar with an 8N, but you just don't see one with a single front. This tricycle 8N was designed by a firm in California for cotton and narrow row vegetable growers. It's believed that several hundred of these kits were made, but now only a handful remain. I know of probably three, maybe four, and I'm, I'm sure that they probably are more than that, but it, it's certainly a, a limited number of them out there. If they had been extremely practical, there probably would have been a lot more of them, but of course a lot of eight ends, but, but very few of these with the, with the single front wheel. I really don't know a lot about the history, but uh, in some circles it's called a rice and cane special, and some people, uh, in some cases, it's called a rice and cotton special. Special is the right word for this rarely found Ford, and Danny has come to appreciate just how unique this machine is. The uniqueness of this tricycle front end is this pedestal. It bolts up to the front of the oil pan where the conventional uh, eight-end front end bolted up, and it's it's basically just a pivot assembly, and you use one only one of your outside tie rods that goes through this bell crank, and that gives you your steering effect. But it's it's a it's a fairly simple uh, design, and and uh, it's it bolts right up. The other different item is the 38-inch rear wheels. The conventional wheels were 28-inch, and these are 11 to 38s, and it gives you that increased height, which was what what they were after, trying to you know increase the clearance underneath the tractor for cultivating. Actually, and that, of course, alters the, the gearing ratio of this thing. It wants to run pretty fast in, in, in all of the gears because of the, the height of the tire. But um, it requires uh, raising the fenders up to, to clear the tire because you know, you've, you've, got, uh, uh, you've got that additional height there that you have to contend with. It, um, it, it kind of gives you a funny feeling driving an 8M with that one wheel stuck out there. You just uh, I've always had 8Ns, and when you don't see that those both wheels out there. It kind of makes you feel odd, but uh, but it, it it does drive good. It's the the conventional four-cylinder, 20 horsepower forward half of a V8 uh, engine that uh, basically was came out in '39 with the 9N, and uh, you know a very proven little tough little flathead engine. A Ford fan through and through. Danny has tried to collect all the different configurations of the Ford 8N, but that just makes up a small part of his collection. Danny has acquired many different types of vehicles throughout the years, from high horsepower tractors to horse-drawn wagons and everything in between. I'm a preserver and not necessarily a seller, but uh, we began with Model A's and then going to expand it out into tractors. and. We've got all different types of, of vehicles that would have been found in the, in, you know, in the early area. I've got vehicles back to 1906, and we've, you know, we've gone into horse vehicles. I mean, from the standpoint of uh, wagons and buggies and different types of, of uh, what would be considered implements in some cases. We've tried to just go into all the different directions to to get a little representation of everything that would have gone on during that era. Danny's collection even includes historic buildings. As a result, the plantation grounds resemble a rural Georgia village from the early days of the 1900s. Groups of school children often visit Tea Grove to learn more about the history of agriculture in the Peach State. Tea Grove has been in my family for five generations. Um, and originally there were, there were tea plants here and, and my, my great-grandfather um, actually grew tea. I wanted to try to recreate a village of turn of the century up to, say, 1940 or 50 of rural Georgia and try to bring in the types of industry that you would have found and, and the types of little businesses and what it took to sustain one of these little rural communities. Danny's passion for remembering and preserving America's past keeps him continually on the lookout for the next interesting piece to purchase for his tea grove plantation. I think when you get the, when you get a passion for something, you just can't find the, the outer limits of it, and that's, I think that's kind of where I fell. 
everybody can collect and maybe not on the same level, but uh, I think we all had the opportunity to, to do things that we can enjoy and it makes us feel good. And this makes me feel good. I, I'm one of those people who I think we should make a contribution to trying to preserve some pieces of history and create a potentially a learning experience for next generation and future generations to come.